recently I've been noticing on your Instagram feed and in a lot of blogs and anytime we talk about oil on the show, people's yeah. ears just perk up and you are either as you know your, your team oil or your team anti oil and it's like politics up on capitol hill man there is a lot of fighting that goes into this so when it comes to oil and diabetes i mean what is the best practice here yay or nay my friend it's a great question actually i'm really glad that you brought this up because oil is very contentious just like you talked about you know if we think about eggs as an example eggs were good in the 80s and then they were bad in the 90s and then they were good in the early 2000s and then they were bad and then they're good again and at a certain point you're like great i don't even really know what to think should i have one egg a day multiple eggs a day are they good for me are they not good for me am my doctor recommending the same type of situation mm -hmm. is happening with oil oil was considered heart healthy and then oil was vilified specifically by the plant-based world and now oil is becoming back into fashion again and part of the reason for that is because there's there's this constant recycling of information, this constant uh, analysis to try and figure out, like, do we really know what the answer to this question is? So I've done a, de a decent amount of research on oil to try and figure out, is it helpful for people who are living with blood glucose irregularity, or is it actually not helpful and can it cause more blood glucose irregularity? And what the sum total of my research has actually demonstrated is that if you are living with a pre-existing chronic disease, specifically pre-diabetes, type 2 diabetes, and then any form of insulin-dependent type 1 diabetes, then adding oil to your diet can actually cause your blood glucose to do very strange things. And all of this is sort of predicated on a very simple concept, which is that the thing that causes insulin resistance is an excess consumption of saturated fat in your diet. Okay. So when your saturated fat intake is decently high and when your total fat intake is decently high, that can set the stage for this condition known as insulin resistance. And when insulin resistance is present inside of your liver and muscles, that makes it very challenging for you to be able to consume carbohydrates and metabolize them properly. Therefore, our recommendation is that if you're living with a blood glucose irregularity, then we strongly recommend reducing your oil intake or eliminating it altogether. And if you do that, you're likely to find that your blood glucose control improves significantly. Is it possible to talk about like maybe ranking the oils from worse to a first, so to speak, because I mean, olive oil is one thing and then coconut oil, which is just a saturated fat bomb is something that's a little bit different. And by sure. a little, I mean a lot here. So is it possible to rank in terms of the effect that it may have on your insulin resistance worst to first here? Yeah, exactly. So the, the foods in general, the foods and the oils that are going to cause the highest level of insulin resistance are those that contain either trans fats or saturated fat. So if you had to sort of rank order the three types of fat from worst to best, the number one would be that the worst type of fat to put into your body is a trans fat. The second worst is a saturated fat. The third worst is an unsaturated fat. Okay. So um, the foods that contain the oils that have the highest trans fat content are the ones that are called partially hydrogenated. So if you see partially hydrogenated anything oil, partially hydrogenated soybean oil, partially hydrogenated grapeseed oil, partially hydrogenated canola oil, any of those, just get them out of your diet altogether because trans fats, the, the, the product of partial hydrogenation results in these things called trans fats and trans fats are absolute dietary napalm for your vasculature. So those are the worst. The next worst are the ones that contain significant saturated fat like you had alluded to, okay? So saturated fat is the predominant type of fatty acid that's present inside of coconut oil. Now, coconut oil has become this like new superstar in the world of, uh, you know, nutrition and people in the paleo world and people in the, uh, in the ketogenic world will tell you that you should consume lots of coconut oil because it's actually very good for you. And the, the take that they have on it is that it's not just saturated fat, but it's actually what's called MCT, medium chain triglycerides. Without getting too, too complicated, what that means is that saturated fats have different lengths. Some of them can be 
16 carbons long, which is considered a long chain. Some of them can be 18 carbons long. Medium chain tends to be somewhere about, about 12 to 14 carbons long. So the way that those medium chain fatty acids act is slightly different than the longer chain fatty acids. But that being said, they're still 100% saturated. And we know without a shadow of a doubt, we've actually wrote about this in the Mastering Diabetes book, that saturated fat causes insulin resistance. Saturated fat is the single most effective trigger for the development of insulin resistance inside of your liver and muscle. So as a result of that, when you're consuming coconut oil and you're getting 100% saturated fat, then that can actually quickly set the stage for insulin resistance and cause blood glucose dysre uh, dysregulation. Right. So that then sets the stage. Sorry, were you going to say something? No, 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 no. Please go go ahead. I thought that you were wrapping up, man. I thought that you were in the home stretch and now I feel <laughs> bad that I cut you off because there's more to come. So keep dropping those nuggets of nutrition knowledge, my man. For sure. Okay. So the last thing I'll say is when, when you're talking about olive oil as an example. So olive oil is not a pure saturated fat. Olive oil has a combination of unsaturated fat and saturated fat. It's got some MUFAs and PUFAs, which are called monounsaturated fats, polyunsaturated fats. Both of those are, are technically considered better for you. And then it's got a little bit of saturated fat, and then it's got hopefully zero trans fat because it's not partially hydrogenated. So as a result of that, if you were to move from coconut oil to olive oil, you'd be doing yourself a service because you'd be getting more unsaturated fat. Okay, so the same thing goes true for things like canola oil, because that tends to be a little bit less saturated as well. And so I'm going to put sort of those two in that category right there. And then people have things like, you know, walnut oil and avocado oil, and those tend to be more unsaturated than they are saturated. And that's a good thing. You know, we could go down the list and say, well, what about this oil? And what about this oil? And what about this oil? And each one of them has a slightly different character or you know, a slightly different balance of saturated to unsaturated. But the idea here is that coconut tends to be the most saturated. And then olive oil tends to be significantly less saturated. And that's a good thing for you.